Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. We as women face particular oppression because we have the capacity to be mothers and to bear the next generation. It is neoliberal, godless, atheistic capitalism and a godless, atheistic communism, merely two sides of the same coin that reduce the mother to an economic unit of production and measures her worth only in strict economic terms and that reduces us from mother to worker. I warn those in this house that follow those ideologies that their hour is over. In Ireland last weekend, a measure backed by all the political elites to write the special protection of family and mothers out of the Irish constitution was resoundingly defeated. Two of the clauses targeted were, and I quote, that in particular, the state recognizes that by a life within the home, women gives to the state a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. The state shall therefore endeavor to ensure that mothers shall not be obliged by economic necessity to engage in labor to, to the neglect of their duties in the home, close quote. These words are slightly old fashioned, but it sets out core values that are the basis of society and that healthy society. The removal of the mother from the young child is never good for the mother, the child or society. We must make a start somewhere to stop this. And modern technology allows work from home for the fortunate few. I call on the House to start within our own parties and our parliament to take steps to give an example that in the seventh parliament can take measures to bring about a social change that will impact the lives of women and the children in the whole of South Africa in order for us here in this house to restore the family. It is honorable members, for us to leave a legacy behind that will also not only empower women, but that we will assist, support the African family, the South African family to be restored and for our societies to heal from the wounds that it suffered. I thank you.